This week, Qantas cancels orders for 35 Dreamliners. There they are, the FAA finds Pipistrol in Italy. And the NTSB opens the docket on the Galloping Ghost accident. I'm Ashley Hale. Qantas Airlines, Australia's troubled flagship airline, announced Thursday that it is canceling orders for 35 Boeing 787 Dreamliners. The aircraft are valued at $8.5 billion at list price. According to published reports, the move comes after a troubling year in which the airline had to deal with record high fuel costs, increased competition, and labor union difficulties. The airline recently posted a full year net loss for the first time in 17 years, reporting a shortfall of $254. $0.8 million in the 12 months that ended June 30th. You may recall that earlier this week, ANN reported that the FAA said it was unable to locate the manufacturing facilities claimed by Pipistrol using Google Earth, and cited that as one reason why it would no longer authorize the import of the motor gliders into the U.S. Well, the attention from ANN seemed to get the FAA back on track. As of late Wednesday afternoon, when the FAA issued a brief statement saying that it will now allow Pipistrol to get back in business in the good old USA, stating, quote, Earlier this year, Pipistrol's Italian-based light sport aircraft subsidiary submitted an application to the FAA for special LSA airworthiness certification on a Taurus motor glider. The FAA wanted to ensure that the application included sufficient proof that the aircraft were built in Italy. We now believe we have sufficient evidence that the aircraft are manufactured at the Italian facility. In describing the various aspects of our inquiry, staff anecdotally indicated that Pipistrol LSA SRL facility was not visible on Google Earth, but that was not an official factor in considering the application. Okay, we're pretty sure that new Pipistrol owners all over the U.S. are breathing a sigh of relief now. As part of its continuing investigation into the September 2011 crash of a highly modified P-51D airplane at the National Championship Air Races in Reno, Nevada, the National Transportation Safety Board has opened the public docket. On September 16, 2011, the Galloping Ghost crashed on the ramp in the box seat spectator area. The pilot and 10 spectators were killed, and more than 60 others were injured. The NTSB has previously made a series of recommendations regarding air race safety. The docket includes a great deal of information about the circumstances leading up to the accident, as well as modifications made to the Galloping Ghost airplane. One document indicates that pilot Jimmy Leeward was subjected to over 17 Gs in the pitch-up following the separation of the trim tab from the plane. The information being released Tuesday is factual in nature and does not provide any analysis. The analysis of the accident, along with a determination of probable cause, will come later this month when the final report on the investigation is completed. It was no April Fool's joke when Chicago pilots woke up on April 1, 2003, to find that bulldozers had cut big axes in the runway at Meg's Field on the shore of Lake Michigan. Former Chicago Mayor Richard M. Daly order the deconstruction of the airport under the cover of darkness. His successor, Rahm Emanuel, has enraged the aviation community with his opinion that it was the right thing to do. Emanuel, a former chief of staff for President Barack Obama and a top advisor in the Clinton White House, made the remarks last week as he formally revealed plans to convert the former airport into an urban park where inner city kids can have access to the lakefront. The plan has been in development by the Chicago Park District for two years. The Chicago Sun-Times reports that at a news conference on Thursday, Emanuel said, quote, 
Meg's Field is no longer here. Northerly Island will be a part of the city in a way that everyone can experience. I think it was the right thing to do, end quote. However, the aviation world seems to strongly disagree. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment, including a Taliban attack on the chairman of the Joint Chiefs aircraft. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird flight simulations, as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Thanks for joining us this week. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or podcast, send us an email to news by at aero-news.net. A rocket fired into a U.S. military base in Afghanistan by militant rebels managed to damage the airplane being used by the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Army General Martin Dempsey. But the officer was nowhere near the plane when the attack occurred. Still, damaging the plane was cause for some propaganda on the part of the Taliban, which claimed responsibility for the attack saying that insurgents had used, quote, exact information about the location of Dempsey's plane in mounting the attack. The incident occurred Monday night on Bagram Airfield near Kabul. The Associated Press reports that two maintenance workers were slightly injured in the attack, and a nearby helicopter was damaged. The Joint Chiefs chair flew out of Afghanistan Tuesday morning on a different plane. Coalition spokesman Jamie Grabeel said that it was unlikely that Dempsey's plane was deliberately hit. He said mortar and rocket attacks on Bagram are not particularly rare, but they are usually mounted from so far away, it would be unlikely that they would be able to hit a specific target. Multiple plane orders are often a sign that a company has gotten their business model right, and if that's the case here, Next in aerospace is hitting its stride, with an order from Asia Pacific Jets for 10 of its remanufactured 400 XT aircraft. All 10 next in 400 XT aircraft will be delivered over a period of three years, with a portion outfitted as 400 XT air ambulances and others as normally outfitted 400 XT business jet aircraft. Asia Pacific Jets will also serve as a sales agent in Asia for the 400 XT. The European Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, has granted a type certificate for the new Rotax 912 ISC aircraft engine, only five months after its introduction. After the EASA type certification, BRP's Rotax aircraft engines team will now concentrate on getting certification from the FAA. Other countries will follow as each has its own validation process. With more than 170,000 engines sold over almost 40 years, Rotax aircraft engines are well known throughout the light sport and ultralight aircraft industry. Well, Curiosity has barely begun to spin its wheels on the red planet, yet NASA has selected a new Mars mission to follow it. Set to launch in 2016, the new mission, named InSight, will take the first look into the deep interior of Mars to see why the red planet evolved so differently from Earth as one of our solar system's rocky planets. InSight will place instruments on the Martian surface to investigate whether the core of Mars is solid or liquid like the Earth's, and why Mars' crust is not divided into tectonic plates that drift apart like the Earth's crust. 
Detailed knowledge of the interior of Mars in comparison to Earth will help scientists understand better how terrestrial planets form and evolve. It's Friday, and that means it's time for ANN's Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell's Barnstorming Commentary. This week, Jim talks about rebooting the aero transformation process. Hi, Ashley, and hi, folks. Over a year ago, we did something really quite aggressive. We opined that aviation as we knew it was gone, dead, and if not buried, it should have been. The fact of the matter is that the aviation, the world we knew, really could not keep up with the times, that it was a different world now, and that the aviation that started with the Wright brothers had seen very little actual progress since in terms of how to build an industry, maintain an industry, and have that industry meet the promise of the future. So we opined that it was time for radical change, for a transformation process to reboot aviation, if you will. And while we've had that first and foremost in our hearts, we've had other issues in the meantime that made it difficult for ANN to lead the charge on this. The fact of the matter is because of the economy and the fact that we've got to do business and because we've had some interference in our issues and people trying to silence us, we've done our best, but we have not been able to really push it. That's all about to change. We want to issue a rededication and a challenge to reboot aviation, to seek the transformation that we talked about a year ago. There are over 100 ideas that have been bandied about, about how to transform aviation. Here's just a few, and they're meant to be talking points. They're not the end-all, be-all, but they're the things that we hope will get you excited enough to give some ideas back to us as we put together a process that will start with an inaugural meeting in October or November of this year and continue through a number of meetings until we reach a final conclusion and a final consensus later on in the year. First, we need to deregulate GA and sport aviation. The FAA has too much control. It doesn't have the manpower to do uh, with GA and sport aviation that, what it needs to. And more important, it certainly doesn't have the expertise. The ASTM example with LSA should serve as a map, if you will, to the future of how to get the FAA off our backs and determine our own futures. We need to rebuild the entry level of aviation, ultralight, LSA, experimental, you name it. We need an entry level. We need a way for the younger people and folks with uh, leaner budgets to be able to participate in aviation to some extent. We're a gas that certified products, products that meet a minimum applicable standard, can be sued as defective. If you meet that standard, shouldn't there be some immunity? Aviation is its own worst enemy in terms of marketing and PR. We simply need to learn how to communicate and how to market to the world. We need to get rid of the third class medical, period. It makes no sense for non-commercial operations. We need a GA level administrator in the FAA whose allegiance is to the GA aspect of aviation only. All airmen should have the same constitutional protections as any citizen. The Pilots' Bill of Rights is not enough, and even Senator Inhofe agrees. The associations, such as they are, they're not what they should be, and a couple of them in particular really worry us. There's a lot more on our list. We'd like to hear what you have to think. Please let me know, but in the meantime, I'm Jim Campbell for the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV. British singer Sarah Brightman may be the next space tourist to visit the International Space Station, Reuters reports. Brightman, who rose to fame starring in the original London and New York cast of The Phantom of the Opera, visited Russia about a month ago and received the approval of a medical commission to begin training at the Cosmonaut Training Center. If she makes the journey, it would be scheduled for 2015 at a cost of about $20 million. She would also be the first paying passenger since 2009. It seems extra seats have become scarce since the U.S. retired its shuttle fleet, leaving only the Russian Soyuz capable of making the journey to the space station. That's our program for Friday, August 24th. Remember, Airborne is now seen twice weekly, Tuesdays and Fridays, here on Aero TV. Quick, concise, and convenient, you're always up to date when you're Airborne with Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next Tuesday with another edition of Airborne.